Hi guys, welcome to chapter 6 with measuring the potential success of a business idea with AA revision. So, pricing strategies. So, with pricing strategies, it's defined as the way in which a business decides upon the price of its product or services. So, I've put down six on this slideshow, but there's actually a lot more than six, so I'm hoping to get through this as soon as possible. So, um, the first one, competitive pricing. So, this is when you look at the prices of your competitors that are charging according to their products and making yours similar slightly less than theirs. So if they they're charging, let me find um, a bracelet. Okay, so I'm gonna get out a bracelet just so that I don't forget what I'm using as my example. So a bracelet. So say if it was sold for a pound. So if you were going to compete with them, you would charge it for about ninety six p. So technically you're trying to be competitive with them. Cost plus pricing is calculating how much percentage profit the business wants to make. So it's like additional profit that you want on top of the original cost of the product. So if it was like a pound to make a bracelet, then you're going to add, say you want 50% profits. So it would be pound fifty. Penetration pricing, a lower price than its competitive competition is set by a new competitor to persuade customers of other products to give their own product a try. So with this one it's, it's an attempt to penetrate the market and to gain market share so because there's a new entrant you'll probably then raise your prices back so because you're new you want to like make sure that everyone comes to you so you set a lower price but then so that everyone tries out your product and then you'll end up increasing it back so it's penetration pricing so trying to get your consumers to try out your things premium pricing is higher price is charged than its com competition because the product is seen to be more desire desirable and or of a better quality so i would charge a higher price for my bracelet so say if it was two pounds because it's like i don't know jewelry like there's so many things like tiffany and company or pandora etc and then if you're technically sort of like charging a higher price for your products you think oh yeah it's more desirable although it's more expensive it's probably the same as something that you can find for half or a fraction of the price because tiffany is and co's is pretty ridiculous for the prices they charge and how much like the actual size of things that you actually get anyways price skimming it is charging a very high initial price for the product that is pretty straightforward i believe so it's like usually with like say if you've got a 3d tv or the latest iphone you charge a really high price because you know that this product is like amazing um predatory pricing is setting the price below the cost of production to drive rivals out of the market it is illegal in the uk so technically you're charging lower prices than you're actually even paying to make the product and that means it, uh, you know that a lot of people will come to your services, your your goods and markets, and then everyone else will actually lose out on competition. That's kind of bad because that is gross domestic product, and if there's not enough GDP in the economy, it's kind of bad because you, you're you starting to have negative impacts of growth. Other pricing strategies is demand-based pricing, which is straightforward. So the more demand it is, sort of the more your charge for a product so with like off peak and peak is my example off peak so let me use buses or trains you know oyster cards and stuff right so when peak times is from like i don't know 9 to 5 p.m i believe so it's more expensive because people want to get to work so demand is inelastic which means so whatever prices you charge people will still buy it for that specific price so you charge higher here except at off peak charges you, off peak times you charge lower so it's cheaper it's probably even a half or something so that I don't know because you know that more people are going to go to work they have to go and travel you during nine to five hours whereas off peak people don't usually travel as much so you might as well it's cheaper psychological pricing is to influence consumer thinking so example a tv is 100 pounds but if you sell it at 99 pounds 99p it appears cheaper and i do think it appears cheaper because you and they can actually claim that it's less than 100 pounds because it actually is so like adverts it's like oh yeah um, less than 120 pounds blah 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 and it's probably like 119 pounds 99 sales revenue costs and profits so there's a lot of calculations to this so example total revenue you need to know that it's price times quantity so for an example a textbook is like two pounds fifty if we've got 25 textbooks so it's two pounds fifty times 25 so your total revenue is 62 pounds fifty the text 
textbook being the actual price and the quantity being the 25 textbooks. Total cost is total fixed cost plus total variable cost. So fixed costs are things that do not change as output changes and variable costs are things that do change with output. So as an example, premises, so to rent a premises, it's £25 per week. That is fixed to you. It's not going to change. It's like renting. Rent is a fixed cost. Uh, variable cost being the electricity, so it's £89 per month. Uh, altogether, it is £189. You're probably wondering why 25 it's 25 times 4. That's because I wrote per week. So make sure they don't actually trick you because in the actual exam, you're sort of in a rush to complete things, but you sort of miss the keywords. So here it's like per week. So you have to, usually there's about four weeks in a month. So you times it by four and then you add the 89. And I wrote this as a current month because it is variable cost. Your costs do change. So it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be 189 pounds per month. Maybe your electricity costs decreased in the next month. Maybe it's like 82 pounds. So it will still be the rent plus the 82 pounds. So next month it might be 182 pounds. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Variable cost is basically your cost per unit of output times the quantity produced. So that is your variable cost in case you need to work that out. Break even point. So it's the level of output at which total revenue is exactly the same as total cost. So make sure it's total revenue equals total cost. So if you minus total cost from total revenue, you'll get zero, as you can see here. Break even point is a, a simple way is fixed cost divided by contribution. So price minus variable cost. Contribution is the difference between the price of a product and its variable cost margin of safety so it's the difference between the actual level of output and the break-even level of output so say you've got you plan to make 150 sales and um, your break-even point is 100 sales so your margin of safety is that 50 sales so if you make like 53 if you don't get 53 sales or for example no if you do no wait so basically if you get lower than your break even point you're going you're going into a minus point so technically your demand is falling and therefore you're sort of making a loss so margin of safety is how much you can actually fall by before you actually start making a loss calculations uh, gross profit is turnover minus variable costs operating profit is turnover minus fixed plus variable costs these are things that you just need to know you there's no this and that, you've just got to remember it, basically. Um, turnover is the total income generated by a business sale of its goods and services over a period of time. So th those two, gross profit and operating profit, make sure that you know that the gross profit is just variable cost that you minus, whereas operating profit is your fixed cost too. Profit margin tells you the business of what a percentage of its actual turnover is profit. Usually it is profit margins, but anything that says something margin like here operating profit margin or gross profit margin it is the same layout but you use the first initial thing so with gross profit we've got how you calculate that up here and with operating profit it's down here so make sure it's profit whatever profit it is if it's normal profit it's just profit divided by turnover times 100 and your answer is going to be a percentage so it tells you like i said here what percentage of its turnover is actually profit and that's it guys that is the last part of chapter six i think the next part is probably the last part and it is probably straightforward i will probably go into more details with each of these videos later on so i will pick out break even point and maybe make a 10 minute video on that if you need any help after i've done this so stay tuned for the last and final chapter chapter seven i thought there was going to be 10 chapters but no there isn't woohoo so good luck guys and subscribe and like my videos and I'll see you guys for the next video. Goodbye!